Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the new spring collection from Soonness. This collection consists of these two beautiful puzzles, each by a different artist. So these puzzles are a little bit different than some of the previous Soonness puzzles. Uh, these ones are actually called premium art puzzles and the idea is that they are collaborations with various artists and they're also meant to be very high quality, completely plastic free and also sustainable. So the idea is that you would hopefully do these like lots and lots of times or you'd pass them on to friends and family or other puzzlers, trade them, donate them, sell them, whatever it is to sort of keep the lifespan going, I guess. Um, these were also uh, very limited. So each one only had 500 made um, just to, I guess, keep like any wastage or extras down, like just to keep it to a small number so there wasn't like so much excess. So also part of the sustainability idea. Um, so yeah, you, I actually had to pre-order these at the end of March and then at the end of April they shipped out. Um, and yeah, and then they arrived just the other week. So yeah, I'm really excited to have these. They're both really gorgeous designs. So let's take a closer look at them. So this one here is called Reflections and it's by the Canadian based artist Jess Chen. And so both the puzzles just have like a section of the full image on the box lid and the sides of the box. Um, so basically this one, I'll just turn it around but I'll also pop an image up the top, is like this lovely uh, grid puzzle. So I guess lots of tiny little puzzles if you think about it that way. And each one is just got beautiful different sort of nature inspired little designs or images so it's like one with butterflies and you know one that looks like water with beautiful like water lilies on it or different flowers it's like cherries and um yeah there's like all sorts oh like a mountain with flowers yeah a lot of floral designs and some of them i even notice uh look a little bit japanese inspired like traditional japanese designs seem to have influenced some of these like I can sort of see it in this one and this one so yeah it's really cute but it also has a digital element and apparently that's because this design was originally created by the artist um, in the game Animal Crossing so yeah I think that's really cool that it was sort of like a digital uh, like design for a game like that's really cool and yeah but anyway I really love the colors and all the cute patterns it's just really pretty and just really just cute and very happy and positive so yeah I think that one's going to be a really fun and cute one to do. I should also mention that uh, here in Australia it's actually autumn at the moment and outside it's looking very grey and miserable and it is pouring so this is just such a nice thing to be like playing with on such a gloomy day so yeah I'm really happy to be doing a spring you know puzzle today and just you know doing something more cheery to kind of like you know, uh, not have to think about the gloominess outside. So moving on to the second puzzle, this one's called Marching Spring and it's by the artist Helen Dardick, who's also based in Canada. And as you can see, it's really vibrant and bright. Um, both these puzzles are definitely like right up my alley. Um, but this one, I don't know, I think they're both my favorites, but I'm very much drawn to like this super eye-catching bright design, that's for sure. Um, and just like this one, the image on the front and the sides is just like part of the image. So the full image is on the back. Um, and yeah, this one basically features this cute girl in like a cute little dress, just, I guess, marching along, holding a giant flower through like this beautiful, like, you know, foliage and flowers. And yeah, I guess this burst of colorful spring flowers. And I love this like, cheeky little black cat up here and it also looks like there's a maybe a butterfly up there and yeah it's really cute um I think what I was reading was that this is done as a watercolor and actually in the image here I can actually see the sort of texture of like the watercolor paper and also the style of the watercolor painting come through so yeah it's really cool that that sort of part of the image has been included like so you can really tell it was done in that style. Um, yeah, so yeah, both of these are gorgeous. I really love them both. 
I don't know if I have a favorite. I just like them both for different reasons and they're both just so cute and happy and colorful. Um, so in a sec, I am going to choose one to do in the video. Unfortunately, I can't do both today, but whichever one I don't do in this video, I will definitely be posting on my Instagram feed. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, I'll choose one of these to do and then we will unbox it, have a look at the pieces, of course, and then, of course, get into some puzzling. So I have time traveled back into the past so I can show you what the outer packaging looks like for the two puzzles and also open them up. So they come in these really lovely kind of minimal looking cardboard boxes. Um, basically, you've got the lovely Sunius logo on the front and then each side has some writing. So one side has the Sunius website. Um, this side has beautiful art in pieces. And here we've got the website again. And then here it says reuse, trade, resell, recycle. So sort of promoting the sustainability aspects of the puzzle. And then the back has um, a, well, a couple of things. One, we have a barcode here and it actually has the name of the puzzle. So this one says reflection, so we know which one it is. And then here it's got a little like finger hand like finger pointing hand symbol, but there's actually like a little perforated um, like bit here. So I think the idea is that after we open this, we can push that into the inside of the box to like lift the puzzle up. I think that's the idea, um, but yeah. Um, so the box is held closed with a bit of like tape, um, but like to avoid plastic, it's that sort of like papery tape. Um, yeah. and. Before we open this one, I'll just check that the other one's the same. I'm assuming it's exactly the same. Yes, it has the same things written on it and the logo on the front. And yeah, the back's the same. And then, yeah, this one says marching spring on the barcode. So I guess let's open one of these. All right. Ta -da! There we go. It's looking pretty good. I don't know why, but it's actually bigger, slightly bigger than I had in my head. I don't know, maybe the images on the website and Instagram just made me think they were smaller, but I guess when I look back here at this sort of uh, soonest gradient puzzle behind me, I think it's pretty much the same size. Um, but yeah, so the inside of the lid is just plain and then Let's try out this little, oh, here we go. We've got instructions here, which says um, push the bottom to lift up the puzzle box. So that's what we sort of suspected. So let's try it. Let's, oh yeah, there we go. Woohoo. Cool. So then I can just kind of, yeah. Cool. All right. And then, yeah, the inside is just plain cardboard. Ooh, and I have to say this feels very nice and luxe. It actually feels quite different than the previous Soonness boxes. So, um, but I'll get into more detail in a minute with that. Um, so yeah, let's, I guess, open this one up too. So yep, Ooh, this one looks so nice as well. Super colorful. And yeah, let's, pop it out just like the other one. I kind of like that little thingy on the bottom. I don't know what you call it, poppy out thingy, but it's cool. It does definitely helps you get the puzzle out of the box. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and then here's the other one. So the puzzle that I've chosen to piece together for this video is this gorgeous Marching Spring by Helen Dardick. So let's unbox it and take a closer look. Let's take a look at the outer packaging first. So I did check, it does seem to be the same size as the previous Sunus puzzles, um, which is like a square. Um, and it's like a, just a nice sort of size square. Also I have to say, um, because it has like the design on the sides, if you like put this on sideways on a, you know, your bookshelf or puzzle shelves, it will look very nice. Obviously you can have it on display too. Um, so, well, I have to say that the feel of the box is really nice. Um, it's sort of, I mean, like it's obviously made from cardboard, but it actually almost feels kind of plasticky. Like even if I run my fingernails gently over it, it almost has a bit of a plasticky kind of feel, but, and it has a bit of texture to it. Like it has, 
I can see the texture too. It has a bit of a like a matte linen finish. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. It, it definitely doesn't feel like completely cardboardy. It almost feels plasticky. So I don't know how they did that magic, but I, I like it. It feels really nice. Um, yeah, it feels very luxurious. And yeah, it also feels the box feels pretty sturdy. Like obviously you can press it a bit, but like in general, it feels nice. Um, yeah, just feels really good. So let's look at the box it's on the front. We've got a section of the image, which actually wraps around on each side. Um, but yeah, I really like this. It's just so beautiful to look at. It would just make such a nice like display piece. Yeah, I really, really love it. I think this is definitely, this might want, this one might end up on the shelf behind me. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, so on the back, we've got the full image here and we've got the logo Soonness and it says Marching Spring by Helen Dardick, so the artist. Then it has a little image here of a puzzle piece. I'm guessing that that's like a sort of little example of the size of the pieces. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe we can check that in a bit. And then we've got here the Soonness tag, so at Soonness for like social media. Then it just says 1000 pieces, 50 by 70 centimeters. I'll pop the equivalent in inches on the screen. Designed in Canada, printed in China, printed in soy ink on 100% recycled paper. Um, then it's got like the choking hazard and just a barcode. So let's get the lid off. Yay, it comes off so easily. Oh, this is cool. So inside is this lovely like forest green color and it says, I have a studio in my house, but I mostly live and work inside my head. Helen Dardick. So that's nice, a quote from the artist. I kind of like that. It sort of, yeah, really like embraces the artist and just a bit of like who they are. So yeah, very, very nice. And then it looks like we've got here a paper bag of the pieces. Also, I've noticed there's some writing around the side. So on this side facing me, it says beautiful art in pieces, www.soonness.com. And I think, oh yeah, that's the same as this side. And then this side here says artist Helen Dardick based Ottawa, Canada, and it has her website as well. By the way, I will definitely be sure to list um, all the soonness and also the two artist details in the description below. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and yeah, this information is repeated on this side as well. So let's open this up. Okay. So yeah, that's cool. It's this like paper bag it kind of makes me think of like a snack bag like a bag a giant bag of peanuts or something because it's like one of these bags that i have to like rip open so yeah it's sort of interesting like so yeah i guess once you open this it doesn't become as reusable i mean you could reuse it but i guess the idea is that you would then just pop it into your recycling um, so yeah, very different. I haven't seen anything like that. And also on the front is the cute little soonness like face logo and it says pieces of art inside. So that's very cute. So I pop that there and um, it comes with what looks like a, another paper bag, a bit different in design than this one for you to put the pieces in when you, if you want to pack the puzzle away when you're finished. So. Yeah, just a, it's like a little, yeah, little paper, like, I guess what we'd call here a doggy bag or something where you'd put your food in or something, but it's not that like wide on the bottom. But yeah, anyway, so it's got the little logo here. And then on the back here, it's got a bit of it's got a puzzle piece and it says, put the puzzle pieces here for uh, storing. You can decide to frame the artwork, redo the puzzle many times, trade and resell. Give it a long lifespan. Do you love the artwork? Support our artists by sharing this puzzle on social, uh, you know, and then tags, hashtag Soonus, hashtag artist name. So yeah, that's nice. Like it's kind of cool. And I like that they're sort of like really trying to promote the artists as well. And yeah, really encouraging you to, you know, get the most out of your puzzles as well. So yeah, that's nice, a really nice touch. And then there's still some more. We've got here a ooh, really nice, little kind of like laminated feeling postcard of the artwork and it's actually really thick like so you could actually even pop this in a little frame or send it to someone or you know whatever you like so that's really nice to include that and then it looks like we've got here 
a poster. Oh, the poster feels really nice too. I just like the feel of everything. It's very like tactile and yeah, everything just feels really nice. Um, so again, the poster, it sort of has this, I guess a bit like, oh, it's a little bit different than this. So it actually almost feels a bit like laminated, like very smooth. Um, yeah, it feels really nice. But anyway, we've got this lovely, quite a good size poster, I think. Like it's, what size are you? You're like bigger than A4, but you're smaller than A3 maybe. But anyway, I think it's a quite a reasonable, convenient size. Like it's not ridiculously big, but it's not one of those, you know, it's not just this small. <laughs> like it's, it's a useful size, but not so big that it's like gonna get in your way. Um, yeah, and it really like, it just shows all the artwork, the whole artwork in its, all its glory. It's super colorful, looks beautiful. I'm pretty sure like, yeah, it really matches the colors on the box. So colors look very accurate. Um, yeah, and then yeah, just playing on the back. But yeah, I really like the feel of that. I know I shouldn't get that excited about the poster. I should get excited about the puzzle pieces, but I can't help it, it's nice. And then the box on the inside, again, is this beautiful forest green and just has the little like girl's face logo. Um, so let's open up the pieces, I think. So I guess I'll just tear this open. I feel a little bit scared to do that. It feels like opening a chip packet or something. Ooh, they look so cute. And they smell good too, that like fresh puzzle smell, fresh cardboardy pieces. Um, I think that's all the pieces are. So these look really lovely and they look super pretty, like straight off the bat. They look like little pieces of candy or jewels, especially because the colors in this puzzle are like just so bright. Um, yeah. So I guess let's take a look at the piece shapes, like at a glance is sort of your traditional cut so we've got like a you know two tab the one with like the zero tabs or in you know inverted um, one tab what else we've got three tabs um a four tab and do we have like that other type of two tab obviously edge pieces um well, I find it eventually, this is the, the thing we have every uh, puzzle review video, isn't it? Where I'm hunting for like the perfect piece. Okay, well, I can't off the uh, straight away find one that's got like two tabs as in like different to this one, but I'm sure it's in here. Probably find one in a sec. Anyway, I'll pop an image at the top so you can see better the different piece shapes. But yeah, it's got all your sort of like classic puzzle piece shapes, um, but they definitely look very varied. Like even though this is a four tab one, it's got like cute little spiky corner bits. So it's quite like interesting. Um, yeah, they all look sort of like quite varied and interesting in shape, I guess. Um, and I guess, well, I can't see now, but there was that little image on the back of the box of the piece shape. I think that's fairly accurate in size. Like these definitely feel like quite a little bit smaller and compact, like, um, you know, like sometimes like Ravensburger are quite a bit more elongated. These feel a bit more like compacted. Um, yeah, but they look really cute. Um, yeah, they just look nice. Um, so I guess let's look at an individual piece. So I guess I'll grab this random one. So the back is a lovely gray board, which is perfect. It doesn't have any of the extra paper stuck on. So yeah, really nice. And then the thickness is quite thick. It's like a quite a chunky little piece. Um, yeah, sort of layers of cardboard and yeah, it looks very thick. Um, I'm sure I could bend it if I tried, but with a gentle bend, it doesn't seem to really have much bend. Um, I think like I could probably bend the tabs, but yeah, overall it, fe it feels strong and sturdy, which is good. And then the top is quite interesting. So I guess, I think it might be the same, maybe the same as the box. Just trying to look at the texture on the box. Yeah, I think they're very similar, if not the same. So I can see a bit of texture on the top of the piece. It's like a that sort of cross grain, cross hair. I'm not exactly sure what you call it, like a bit 
like I guess it's sort of matte linen finish really but it's got that little crisscrossy texture on it and you can definitely sort of see it um, and you can definitely feel it um, but yeah it feels very nice and it's quite matte um, yeah they're definitely not glossy pieces they are matte pieces I can still see a tiny bit of sheen like I can see the ring light is making a little bit of sheen but it's not um, too prominent at all like it's quite subtle so we'll have to see when putting this together if the light shining on it is going to cause any like I guess glare spots or anything like that and obviously that's going to just be dependent on you know each person's like puzzle setup like you know whether you're puzzling under a window or different lights or you've got a lamp or something it's always going to affect your puzzling differently um, but yeah for the most part it is fairly matte yeah it just feels very nice even though it does have that texture it's still very smooth um, yeah so just overall a very nice puzzle piece um, so yeah I'm really excited to play with these they just look really nice I'm hoping that because they've got a lot of variation like subtle ver like variations in the sort of cut of the pieces that there shouldn't be too many false fits um, also as well like looking through it I'm not seeing any damaged pieces which is good um, everything looks very intact and looks very good also the colors look very like vibrant and crisp like everything looks I guess like yeah seems as far as I can tell seems to match what's on the box lid like perfectly so yeah like I think I actually just found that bit there yeah it looks the same the colors look the same nice and bright yeah and really crisp and clear um so I think that's all I have to say about the puzzle pieces I guess actually oh, I was about to say we can't look at the whole image because it's on the bottom of the box but we can because we have a lovely poster and postcard here so I guess before puzzling let's have a chat about how I could put this puzzle together I guess so I was sort of thinking I don't think I'll do the border first because I don't oh here's like actually if I look there's like looking at some of these edge pieces here a lot of them seem to be mostly that like off-white color which probably means doing the edge first is going to be tricky so I think that might be one of the last things I do um, some edge pieces might get put in on the way if they've got like a bit of color on them or something and I can tell where they go but otherwise I think the edge is going to happen last um, but because there's like there's quite a lot of bright distinct colors and patterns in this puzzle so I think you know um, I can probably pick out like certain sections like maybe for example this quite like dark blue flower here and it's sort of little diamond center I feel like that will probably stand out even the black cat will probably be pretty easy to find because there's not much I think that's the only sort of real uh, black color in the puzzle there's some like browns and things but nothing like that dark um, you know and then we have like these stripy teal colors here um, and really there's like not that much yellow like here 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 and even like some of this blue is you know quite different so there's a lot going on but I feel like you know um, I think there's actually quite a lot of like distinct sections which should hopefully be easy to find amongst the pieces um, yeah so I think that's sort of gonna be my process it means I might end up with lots of little sections that don't quite go together straight away but I think it will come together like over time I'm also thinking I'll probably end up using both the bottom of the box and the box lid like since we have lovely poster here we don't need to see like the back of the box or the front um, so we can probably like yeah spread the pieces across both to just so we can see more of what we're doing because these are fairly deep I guess so yeah anyway I think we've done enough rambling and I'm definitely excited to get into this so let's get puzzling
I really love how this puzzle's turning out. It just looks so cute and cheerful. And yeah, I love the colors. Like they're just so bright and like quite vivid and yeah, just really pretty. Um, so yeah, perfect to sort of like cheer up this gloomy autumn Sydney weather we're having. Um, yeah, so I just, yeah, love the artwork. I think it's cute. I love this like black hat here. It's really, it looks really cheeky. Um, yeah, everything's really pretty. I really, yeah, really love it. Um, and it hasn't been too difficult to put together so far. I think so far my strategy of sort of like uh, picking out colors or patterns seems to have worked pretty well um, to get to this point, which I don't know if this is halfway or a little bit less than halfway. It's taken uh, like just under two hours and 40 minutes. So not too bad. Um, I mean, as you can see, like, some bits have joined up, but I've still got a lot to sort of join up together. But you know, that'll, I guess, happen in the next session. We'll start seeing all these parts sort of join together. And I'm sure some of them probably aren't quite sitting in their exact spot, but that's all right. It'll come together eventually. Um, and yeah, as for uh, quality, well, yeah, I have to say I'm really impressed. Um, I've been enjoying everything about this puzzle so far. So the piece shape has been excellent. I haven't found any false fits. I had one piece in the wrong spot for a while, but uh, that was because I had it too far away that I couldn't see that it absolutely did not fit in the spot at all, I think. So I wouldn't really consider that a false fit. I think that one's on me for <laughs> having it just too far away. Um, but yeah, like the pieces just fit really well together. Um, they don't seem to be like too loose or too tight, like very comfortable. So you can definitely like, let's see, pick up sections quite well. Um, so that's been very helpful, especially putting together like color and patterns um, sections. I've been able to do that in front of me and then just lift them up and place them elsewhere on the board. So that's been pretty good. Um, so yeah, pieces hold together very well. And then as for coming apart, I think they come apart pretty easily. So some like this, I still need to sort of hold it to like pull it apart, but it still comes off like they're not like, I guess, completely wedged together or anything like that. Like they, they go together pretty well and then they come apart pretty easily, like without too much effort. So yeah, I think like it's a really nice fit. Um, yeah, and I really love the sort of like thickness of them. Um, they just have a really nice feel. Like I sort of like that they're this sort of more cute little chunky piece shape, like it just feels nice to handle. And yeah, speaking of the feel, like I really like the surface feel, um, I guess, is it like the box? Yeah, uh, the box is a bit more textured. These are definitely like very smooth, um, but they're just a subtle like hint of texture. Like I can actually see that sort of like cross hatch texture more than I can probably feel it actually. Um, but yeah, they feel actually very smooth. Um, and uh, sort of speaking of, uh, I guess, surface as well, I haven't actually had any problems at all with like glare or sheen. I thought I might because before when I was sort of like showing the piece, the light shone on it a little bit, but actually I haven't had any issues at all with it. Like I can see everything on the board very clearly. Um, I can see like the, the proper color it's supposed to be, like there's no glare spots or anything. So, um, and I've even got a ring light out as well. So yeah, that's really good. It's been super helpful trying to figure out where different colors go. Um, especially because like in this puzzle, you know, there's like different blues and yellows and different colored sections, but they're all a little bit different and subtle. Like this blue flower is different to like this blue leaf, for instance but it's quite a subtle color variation. So yeah, being able to like see the pieces without any like interference of sheen or glare has like been super helpful. Um, and I guess the only other thing that I forgot to mention before, which I've been reminded of now, is that there is a tiny bit of puzzle dust. I think I just forgot to mention it before because we had like a opaque paper bag and I sort of didn't really think about it, but um. Yeah, like the puzzle dust is pretty minimal. Like there's some speckles of it on the board, but to be honest, I haven't really found it like clinging to the pieces or even my hands. My hands didn't feel too dusty at all after working on this. Um, and yeah, and I didn't um, 
feel like sneezing or anything like that. So yeah, I have to say that the dust has been uh, not a problem at all for me. So yeah, really, um, yeah, really happy. So I think that's kind of everything. Um, yeah, lo love the image. Um, like I think I said earlier that, yeah, you can actually sort of see like the sort of texture of like the the watercolor paper and even like some of the sort of paint watercolor paint strokes and stuff like you can kind of see that and I think it's really cool so yeah love the artwork um, definitely super impressed with the quality I'm very very happy with it um, oh just to add I haven't found any damaged pieces at all either so uh, yeah I don't know if like however they do the manufacturing it seems to be uh, I guess like really well done in that none of the pieces at least in this puzzle I haven't found any that are damaged so um, I mean when I do the other puzzle for Instagram I'll definitely keep an eye out and see if there's anything there but yeah so far I haven't found anything so yeah really really impressed um, so I'm gonna get back into puzzling in a sec and hopefully finish this off so I guess I think I'll continue on with my sort of strategy of like you know uh, picking out like color or like pattern section so I'm sort of thinking like a lot of what I have left now is like greens and like pinks and reds and then of course like the sort of I guess uh, white space of like the girl herself like her dress and face and stuff so you know maybe the next bit I might do is like pull out this sort of reddish color for her hair and like this flower over here and then yeah, and then maybe just pull out greens or pinks. Yeah, I don't think there's too much left really, but there is a lot of pink and green, so that bit might still take me a little while. Um, but I don't think it'll be too, too, too difficult. I'm not, so far everything's been like pretty straightforward. It hasn't been too, too tricky. I mean, the yellow took a bit longer than some of the other areas. Um, but yeah, I am expecting the border though to be a bit tricky because I think some of that's just going to have to be done by piece shape like I've managed to put in some border pieces where like there was a bit of color on them um, but yeah apart from that I think yeah that would definitely be like maybe the trickiest bit sorting by shape rather than being able to sort by color or pattern um, so yeah I'm not really sure how much longer this um, puzzle is going to take to finish maybe another two to three hours maybe less um, I guess we'll see so I yeah, I guess I will see you after I finish this puzzle.
I finished this absolutely stunning and super adorable puzzle. I really love how it's turned out. It's just so like fun and colorful and cheerful and has really helped me forget about the yucky weather outside. And this last puzzling session was a little bit uh, longer than the first one. It took three hours and 15 minutes or a tiny bit longer. Um, and that's just because I found the second session a bit more tricky than the first, which I'll get to in a, get into in a sec. Um, so all up, uh, the two puzzling sessions all together took just under six hours, so including sorting. So yeah, I think that's not bad for a 1000 piece puzzle. Um, yeah, so the second session of puzzling was trickier just because, um, well, I knew that the border or edge pieces were gonna have to be sorted by piece shape. So that took a bit longer and was a bit more like tricky. But also these sort of pink flowers I had to sort by piece shape too because even though they look quite distinct when they're put together, when you've got all the pink pieces in front of you and especially like under this lighting, um, it was a bit hard to tell them apart. So I just found it easier to sort by piece shape there as well. Um, but yeah, I got there in the end. I didn't find it too frustrating, definitely doable. And I actually think this puzzle is like a sort of good mix of like difficulty, I guess. So like there's like lots of easy parts, there's some sort of moderate parts, and then there's a few parts that are a little bit tricky as well. So I think that makes it like kind of a fun puzzle for like everyone. Like I think different age groups could do this and also like uh, different like puzzling skill levels. So I think if you're a beginner puzzler, you could definitely take this puzzle on. But then if you're also like a really experienced puzzler, you could still find enough challenge and like interest in this puzzle to sort of keep you entertained as well. Um, so let's talk uh, puzzle quality. Um, yeah, so I had a really great puzzling experience, really like fun and easy going. And yeah, that's just because the quality, I just found it to be really nice. I'm really impressed with it. Um, so just to recap, I think the piece fit is really nice, not too loose or too tight. You can like do puzzle pickups, but you can also pick up sections and move them around the board very easily. Um, you can also undo the pieces fairly easily. So I still found you needed like two hands, but you can still undo the pieces without too much effort, which is good, um, which means that when you undo your puzzle, you're not gonna damage the pieces. So that's important. And I didn't find any false fits. Yeah, I feel like all the pieces just fit where they were supposed to go really easily. So yeah, really happy with that. Um, I guess a couple things to note, there is definitely puzzle dust, like I can see it on my board and there were some in the box, but I found like it didn't really stick to the pieces too much. And me personally, um, it didn't really cause me to sneeze or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have a problem with it. Um, and then um, as for damaged pieces, I was keeping an eye out, but I really didn't find anything. I think I found like one piece that had the most tiny minuscule, like bent corner or something, but I can't even remember where it was. Like I can't even see it. Like it was so minor that it's probably not even worth mentioning, but just, just for like transparency sake, I thought I would. Um, yeah, so I'm really impressed with how like, that there's just no damage and just the quality in general is just really high and the puzzle's just really well made. So yeah, really, really pleased. And yeah, I just wanna mention again, I really like the quality of the packaging and all the little like bonus items. Like the box is just really nice. Feels so sturdy, has a really nice texture. It just feels high quality and luxurious. And yeah, I really like that you get the sort of like, you know, the little postcard, the nice poster and the extra like paper bag to store it in, I think you just get a lot of nice little bonus items. So yeah, really, really pleased with that. Let's talk price. So this is definitely a high end price puzzle. Uh, in US dollars, it's I believe 58 and I paid 79 Australian dollars. I'll pop that up there. That does include global shipping. Um, so I think there's probably a few reasons why it is that price. Uh, one, shipping. Uh, two, it's a very limited print run. So there was only 500 made of this one. Um, so whenever you're doing such a small print run, it's definitely gonna cost a lot more. But you know, part of that idea was that by doing a smaller print run, you're not creating so much excess or wastage. So, you know, I think it's for a really good reason. Um, two, obviously you, there's a lot of cost in having nice, like 
really good quality high-end materials and also including like all the extras like the poster and stuff like that is going to cost more as well and then the last thing I could think of is they have to pay their very talented wonderful artists like obviously the artists would like to get paid too so yeah I think that's super important that you know artists get recognized and uh, you know compensated for their work and talent um, so I guess the question is, would I recommend this puzzle for that price? And I would say yes, I would definitely recommend it. Um, although I think it's obviously not going to be accessible or suitable for all puzzlers. So I think if you're the sort of puzzler that is maybe more like me who l enjoys collecting like limited puzzles and special like, you know, artist collaborations and things like that, I think this is definitely a really great option for you. Um, and I think if you're like also really wanting to like, you know, uh, get behind the sustainability of this puzzle and, uh, you know, you're, you want to like share this puzzle with family and friends and other puzzlers. Um, yeah, I think it can be a really good option too. Like if you think you can get a lot of like use and longevity out of this puzzle, then I think it's also a good option. Um, it's a sort of puzzle like you could potentially you know share the cost with friends like other puzzlers and then you know have it as a bit of a group puzzle like I definitely have heard of people doing that before so that's definitely an option but yeah of course the price is not going to be accessible to all puzzlers and I think if you're the sort of puzzler who you know doesn't really keep puzzles in your collection long well that's it like maybe you're not much of a collector you just want a uh, fun affordable puzzle that you're going to just do once and then get rid of or pass on or whatever, then this probably isn't the best option for you. Um, so yeah, I guess some things to think about. Uh, of course, not all puzzles are suitable for all puzzlers. So I also wanna let you know about an upcoming event by Soonness. So in the month of June, there's gonna be the PMP event, which stands for pick and pre-order event. Um, and so what that is, is that during a certain period of time in June, there'll be nine different puzzle designs available. So by various artists, um, you can actually see some of them now on the Soonness Instagram page. Um, I'll also link all the details for this in the description below. Um, and so uh, each week, three different designs will be available and will be open for pre-order for a short period of time. And then the designs that have like meet a minimum, I guess, order requirement, they will be the ones that get like manufactured and turned into actual puzzles. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be very similar to how this was done where it's like a pre-order and then it gets uh, made and like shipped out. And uh, from what I understand, it will be the same quality and the same like packaging and like bonus items. I think the only difference from what I've been told would be that they're actually working on creating like a custom shape uh, like die cut. So the pieces will be a different cut just to make it more fun and interesting. So yeah, I just thought I'd let you know about that, um, especially if you really like the look of these puzzles or if you've got these and you're really enjoying them, you might be interested in that event. So in the comments below, let me know what you thought of both of the spring collection puzzles, I guess, especially this one, since this is the one I put together in the video. Uh, did you enjoy the artwork and you know is this your sort of puzzle and I guess uh, let me know is artwork in puzzles important to you or how important is it do you tend to like choose your puzzles based on like the artist and the art style or do you choose it for a different reason yeah I guess let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video make sure you show that like button some love and if you want to see more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.